Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time you have stumbled across one of my videos, what I do on this channel is I react to all things Scandinavia. So that is videos about Sweden, Norway and Denmark. I have been doing a lot of videos recently about Norway and Sweden. I really need to get into Denmark. I've done one or two so far. And so I am back here again to react to a video about Denmark. And today's video is going to be 15 things you didn't know about Denmark. So I'm hoping for some really good facts. I am using the same video company that did the last video I reacted to, which um, 15 things about Norway, which I got a lot of comments about saying that the video was really not that accurate. So I'm at least hoping that this video is more accurate than the Norway version but I guess you guys in the comments will have to let me know if there is a lot of errors in this video that I am reacting to because I want to know the real facts I want to know the truth so yes feel free if you watch this video and the video I'm reacting to has a lot of wrong information please let me know the right information in the comments I would appreciate that so much so yes without any more talking let's get into it this is things you didn't know about Denmark let's go here are the 15 things you didn't know about Denmark for you to find out some more about this amazing country number one Danish ancestors were Vikings the period between 990 and 1066 is commonly known as the Viking Age that was when people originally from the Scandinavian Peninsula and Northern Europe, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, known as the Vikings, ventured by sea into Europe and conquered a lot of territory. Yeah, I mean, obviously I've mentioned in videos before, being from the UK, we know a lot about the Vikings. You know, the Vikings invaded England at the time. Um, we learn a lot about the Vikings at school. There is a lot of stuff on TV about the Vikings. It's a very interesting period of time. And, you know, a lot of us find it really interesting and really fun to read about and learn about. So, yeah, Vikings were super cool. And, uh, yeah, we like them here. It's said that the Danish Vikings were the most active of them all, conquering Britain, France, and Western Europe. Vikings were pagans, living by their own mythology and beliefs with powerful gods like Odin and Thor. Their mythology became so popular that it inspired a lot of books, modern mythology, fantasy, movies, and TV shows. The Vikings' ultimate purpose was to resist Christianity from spreading by all means, and up to this day, very few Scandinavian people are Christians. No, I didn't know Number that. two, they have the world's happiest citizens. A lot of studies show that the Danes are amongst the happiest people in the world. At first, it was thought that Danish people were so happy because they have low expectations. But after some... I mean, I don't know if that's the reason why uh, Danish people are happy. I can't imagine, you know, that would be uh, what people decided was the reason, even at any time. But yes, obviously, when you watch, when you read about the happiness index, you know, the lists that come out every year that say the happiest countries in the world... Now, Denmark's always quite high. A lot of the Scandinavian countries or the Nordic countries are quite high. Um, and there's got to be a reason for it. You know, I'm. it's great. I mean, I'm happy for them to be, you know, living in a country where they feel like they're just really happy. I don't know what that feels like because stuff like that in the UK, not everyone is happy. <laughs> so not we're not on that list very high. So let me tell you that. <laughs> research the real reason was discovered and that is their government actually takes care of them Danish which doesn't happen here in the UK so it makes all the difference people get free access to health care education and a whole 10 months of maternity or paternity leave yes you can definitely say a high standard of living is enjoyed in Denmark and this standard let the country to rank high in some metrics of national performance in categories like education health care protection of civil liberties democratic governance prosperity and human development number three the movie frozen was based on a fairy tale mm. written by a Danish author the 2013 movie Frozen, popular not only amongst children but amongst parents and teenagers too, is based on the original children's tale The Snow Queen, written by Danish author Hans Christian Andersen. The author is widely known for fairy tales like The Emperor's New Clothes, The Little Mermaid, The Nightingale, The Ugly Duckling, and Thumbelina. To honor his work and his legacy... This yeah, I mean, we've all 
probably grown up reading the fairy tales of Hans Christian Andersen. I know that I did. I know a lot of other people that did. I mean, his stories are really famous and really popular. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping that when I go to Copenhagen that I can see that little mermaid statue. And I don't know if you can go, if he had, if there's any way you can go that he used to live or if I'm mistaking him as someone else. But um, yeah, super interested in that. And that would be really cool to experience. The city of Copenhagen named a boulevard after him and dedicated a statue to one of his famous characters, the Little Mermaid. The statue will be 105 years old this year and one of the most beautiful art pieces in Denmark. Number 4. Lego toys are originally from Denmark. Lego is originally from Billund, Denmark and has been manufacturing the beloved toys since 1949. In February of 2015, Lego replaced Ferrari as the world's most powerful brand and has mega shops all around the world, theme parks, books, jewelry, and clothing for sale. They produce 19 billion pieces of Lego every year, and their toys are even used at NASA Kennedy Space Center for building prototype ships and learning. Last year, they released a new collection cherishing the women who helped and worked throughout the years for a better understanding of space. That's awesome. The collection is called Women of NASA, and it includes minifigures of Nancy Grace Roman, Margaret Hamilton, Sally Ride, and Mae Jameson. Cool thing if you ask us. Number 5. The richest man in the country has a net worth of $5.5 billion. With such a huge and successful company, the Lego Group owner is by far the richest person in... Oh, okay, so it, it makes sense that, you know, the richest man in Denmark is, you know, the owner of Lego. I mean... Yeah, after just hearing all that stuff about Lego and how how much of a big brand it is, you know, overtaking Ferrari and things like that. Um, yeah, it's no surprise that the owner is the richest man in Denmark. So good for him. I wouldn't mind a bit of that uh, change. Denmark. He's currently 70 years old and he inherited the company from his grandfather, Oli Kirk Christiansen, who founded Lego almost 100 years ago. The company now focuses on rebuilding itself as a sustainable brand, taking into consideration how their plastic toys affect the environment. The company has announced it's invested $165 million into the cause and recruited over 100 new employees in an effort to implement sustainable alternatives to existing materials by 2030. They have already started by reducing their packaging size and their carbon footprint. Lego also started a campaign called Build the Change, inspired by hundreds of letters they've received from kids all around the world. Through this campaign, they are trying to have a positive impact over the environment and nature. Number 6. They have a serious problem with a low birth rate. Wow. Even though their citizens are among the happiest people in this world, and their government takes care of them by giving them free health care, free education, and paid maternity or paternity leave, the Danish people are not making babies anymore. This issue is so serious that in 2015, Denmark's government got involved and started a series of campaigns promoting sex and having children. Those campaigns have some crazy ideas behind them, such as promoting a trip with a hotel room and all the facilities included in order for couples to feel encouraged to have sex. Another one. That's uh, quite funny, actually. I, I don't know why I'm finding that so funny. It's like encouraging people to have sex doesn't necessarily mean someone is going to want to have a baby. So I don't know how, how successful that campaign was. Maybe you can tell me in the comments below. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's obviously sad that, you know, they have a problem with a low birth rate. You want people to be procreating, I guess, to keep the population as it, it is. Um, but yeah, I just thought the, the, the idea about the campaign was just amusing. <laughs> Tell me your thoughts about that campaign in, in the comments below if you, if you remember it. One promoted making babies and giving parents grandchildren through mottos like, do it for Denmark. Do it for mom. I guess desperate times call for desperate measures. Number seven, the Kim Wall murder trial starts this spring in Denmark. Mm. Swedish freelance journalist Kim Wall disappeared during the night between the 10th and the 11th of August 2017 after she was last seen boarding Peter Madsen's midget submarine UC3 Nautilus. Kim was writing about him and accepted his invitation to check out the submarine, but sadly she ended up being killed in cold blood by Madsen, with her body then cut into pieces and dumped into the sea. 
UC3 Nautilus sank Oops. afterwards, but its owner escaped. There is some speculation that he even ate some of her remains. Prosecutors were shocked by the clues and texts they found showing the intent to murder Kim. Madsen is accused- God, that is just so shocking. I, I don't even know how to like process that information. Um, God, it's just awful of killing Wall and hiding her body. The trial for this murder will take place in the spring of 2018 in Copenhagen. Okay, so if it's already happened, maybe you guys can let me know. Did he end up going to jail? Is he found guilty? Hopefully he was, but I don't know. Maybe I'll have to Google it. Number eight. The ruling prince didn't want to be buried next to his queen. The royal family of Denmark is one of the most respectable monarchies in the world, with no scandal or controversy ever surrounding them until last year. Prince Henrik, who was suffering from dementia, announced that when he died, he didn't want to be buried next to his Marguerite in the cathedral where the remains of Danish royals have gone for centuries, breaking huh. a 459-year-old tradition. The queen had already made a special sarcophagus for the couple. Prince Henrik was titled the Prince Consort, not King, even though he was Queen Marguerite's husband. He wasn't in the line of succession, his oldest son, Frederic, being the heir to the throne. Sadly, Prince Henrik died at the age of 83 in February of 2018. He was cremated, and half of his ashes were scattered across the Danish seas, and half placed at Friedensborg Palace. Number 9. Nice. The Geography of Denmark Helps Them With Industry in Denmark, it rains or snows every other day, around 170 days out of the year. It's basically windy, rainy, and kind of cold with sparks of sunshine. Sounds like the UK to me. That is the weather we get. It's not great here. Really not, except for a few days in summer. But even then, that's it. Shine and warmth during the summer. Also in Denmark, there are no mountains or hills, and the country is surrounded by water. All of these factors forced Denmark to explore new ideas regarding the production of energy. In 1970, the Danes were pioneers in developing commercial wind power. Nowadays, a substantial share of the wind turbines all around the world are produced by Danish manufacturers like Vestas and Siemens Wind Power. This method is so effective that it generates 140% of the country's demand. Denmark is a good example of making the most out of what you've got. In their case, wind and zero altitude. Number 10. The most expensive vodka in the world was held at a bar in Denmark and was worth $1.3 million. Okay, I mean, I like a vodka every now and then, but there is absolutely no way I'm paying that much for a bottle of vodka. Just no way. I don't even know if it's for the bottle or for a glass. But that is super crazy. Really crazy. In order to honor the centenary of his company's factory, the Russian Russo Baltique, a luxury car maker, created the world's most expensive bottle of vodka. The bottle was handed to Cafe 33, a bar in Denmark, as a part of their collection. The famous bottle of vodka even became a TV show phenomenon and was featured in episodes from shows like House of Cards, where it was portrayed as the present from the president of Russia to his US counterpart. As the no. Danish police stated recently, the bottle that is valued at $1.3 million was stolen. Moreover, it was found- Okay, so I'm assuming it's just the bottle that's worth that much and not the vodka inside, but I don't know, even still, it's a lot of money, so it's got a lot of value empty on a construction site. Such a shame and such a loss. But if you'd like to learn some more about the most expensive beverages out there, go check out our video on the top 10 most expensive alcoholic drinks in the world. Number 11. A lot of famous actors, musicians, and bands come from Denmark. A lot of well-known actors are from Denmark. Mads no. Mikkelsen, who plays Hannibal in the TV series with the same name. Nikolaj Kosterwaldo, who plays yeah. Jamie Lannister in the TV series. Yeah, I knew he was from Denmark. I watched Game of Thrones. Well, I used to when it was on, obviously. Um, yeah, I knew he was Danish. He's a great actor and he played a great role in Game of Thrones. But I also know that he was in a lot of other things as well. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of famous actors. Game of Thrones and his colleague, Catrice Von Houten, who plays Melisandre in the same TV series. 
The characters played by Danish people are strangely, usually weird, dark, mean, and evil, but the actors performing are very good at impersonating them. The drummer from the band called Metallica, one of the most successful rock bands that are still going strong today, is also from Denmark. And since we're talking about brands, worth mentioning is Skype, which was co-founded by Dane Janus Fries in 2003, and later sold to eBay and afterwards to Microsoft. Number 12. Denmark has a strong cycling culture. Danish people are known for their love of biking, Denmark being one of the most developed countries when it comes to cycling culture. The capital of Denmark, Copenhagen, was named in 2017 the world's most livable city and best huh. city for cyclists. That comes as no surprise. I mean, obviously in Scandinavia as a whole, there's a, I think, quite a strong cycling culture, but I guess Denmark must really be the number one uh, place for, for cycling. Um, I mean, don't even try cycling here in the UK. There is like not a cycling culture at all. We haven't built anything really for it um, as far as I know, unless it's some little bits in some of the big cities. But yeah, that does not here. But I like cycling, so maybe I'll fit right in in Scandinavia since Copenhagen is a haven for cyclist lovers and environmentalists with over 390 kilometers of bike lanes. The cycling culture is so strong that kids are learning how to ride a bike from a young age. Furthermore, in primary school they have special classes in which they learn about traffic rules and road safety through campaigns like All Children Cycle, held by Danish Cyclists Federation. Denmark is leading by example, and countries like the US, China, Mexico, and Australia started to become more bike friendly as well. Number 13. They managed to ban plastic bags. 8 million tons of plastic waste ends up in the oceans each year. There'll be more plastic than fish by weight in the oceans by 2050 if current trends continue. So taking the initiative... Yeah, I mean, obviously there is a huge problem with plastic at the moment, especially going into the oceans. I'm hoping that with time, the situation gets better and, you know, there are more ways of not using so much plastic. But yeah, I don't know. I don't really like using single-use plastic, so... Hopefully, like if there are more people that think the same, eventually, um, yeah, it will be less of a problem. But it's good, yeah. If, I mean, if they've managed to ban plastic bags, good for them. I think it's great. To ban plastic bags is very important, and every country should do so as soon as possible. Denmark and other countries like Hong Kong, Britain, South Africa, or Botswana successfully banned plastic bags due to environmental issues and pollution. It's a massive step towards stopping plastic waste, and they managed to inspire other countries to act the same on this matter. The average Dane, for example, now uses just four single-use plastic bags a year, after the introduction wow. of a plastic use fee back in 1994. Number 14. Pandora, the jewelry brand, comes from Denmark. Pandora, the international Danish jewelry manufacturer and retailer. Yeah, I mean, I've heard of Pandora. There's a lot of Pandora stores here in the UK. I'm sure they're all over, you know, Europe, maybe the rest of the world. Um, I had no idea they were from Denmark. So that is a really interesting fact. That is cool. And uh, another success story. So that's great. Started as a family-run jewelry shop in Copenhagen, it was founded in 1982 by Per and Evelsen, and the jewelry company soon became a huge brand. The Pandora products are now sold in more than 100 countries on six continents through wow. approximately 7,700 points of sale, including approximately 2,200 concept stores. The company is publicly listed and traded on NASDAQ as NASDAQ Copenhagen Pandora, and it's said to be worth $11.8 billion. Amongst Pandora's popular jewelry pieces are the silver Pandora bracelets with their splendid charms and the Pandora silver rings. Number 15. Education, as we said, is free in Denmark. As stated before, the Danish government takes care of the people that live in Denmark through things like... Yeah, I mean... It seems like in most of Scandinavia, if not all of Scandinavia, education is free. I mean, I'm sure that there are 
other things you may need to pay fees for something or buy books or whatever but I'm guessing like actual tuition is free and it makes such a difference because here especially tuition is so expensive obviously in the USA it is astronomical and I think if the tuition is free it just makes it more accessible to everyone to get higher education and yeah I think it's absolutely great like free healthcare paid maternity or paternity leave, and free education. The Danish government provides accommodation for all students, fully furnished dorms or apartments, wow. and a monthly allowance of $900. This money comes from the tax- That is insane. Uh, the, the Danish people are obviously so lucky. It's incredible. And I kind of wish that I had been living in Denmark, you know, you know, and had that opportunity. It's awesome. Wow. That's crazy. They actually get like money for going, an allowance or whatever it is. That's so insanely good. I'm super jealous, really jealous. Taxes that Danes are paying. The taxes are as high as 60%, which makes Denmark an expensive country to live and work in. These taxes are based on a... Yeah, obviously uh, taxes are going to be super high in Denmark compared to a lot of other countries. So I guess it goes in roundabouts. But, you know, if people are more than happy to pay taxes that are that high just so they get a lot of stuff back, you know, they get a lot of free free stuff. Um, I mean, I would be happy to pay that much tax if it meant myself and a lot of other people got a lot of opportunities to get a lot free and... Uh, yeah, I mean, it, I think it's great, to be honest. Passive tax system, a system that seems to work perfectly for Nordic countries. They have higher taxes, but a recent survey showed that nine out of 10 Danish citizens are happy to pay it, which makes the government's life easier. And I go. guess in turn, the citizen's life easier as well. Is Denmark amazing or what? They sure have a special way of approaching life. Before you go, let us know this. Did you own any Lego bricks when you were young and growing up? Or do you own them now? Let us know of in the course. comments below. Still here, are you? Of course you are. And since you stuck with us until the very yes. end, here's a bonus fact just for you. Number 16. Mm -hmm. They have a special word for a certain feeling. The word huga okay. describes the cozy feeling of togetherness, which gets you through the winter. Uh, yeah. The word can also be found in the Norwegian vocabulary. The best English translation is coziness, but the word has a deeper meaning and it can't be translated through words alone. There's also a book written about- Yeah, I mean, I've definitely heard a lot about this word. If it's, I mean, I'm hearing it pronounced huga. I'm assuming it's spelled H-Y-G-G-E because that is a very popular Danish thing that I've heard a lot about um so yeah I think that's a really interesting thing actually it's I love the feeling of being cozy like I know that I'm I you know I like huga tell me if I'm pronouncing it right I'm just copying from what she said so I have no idea but yeah what a cool concept really like that this word the feeling and how to achieve it it's called the little book of huga I actually have that book. I haven't like fully read it yet, but I have that book. Danish Secrets to Happy Living. The book is now translated into multiple languages and it's a bestseller. After the success of the book, a lot of blogs started to come out talking about this word and feeling and making content around it. Huga was rated one of the top 10 words of the year in 2016. In fact, Huga ranked right behind Brexit in Collins Dictionary Words of the Year. Wow. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxer. Make sure to subscribe. Okay, guys. So that was me reacting to things you didn't know about Denmark. There was actually a lot of interesting facts on there that I didn't actually know. There was obviously some things in there that I did know. and But it was good to just get a, another kind of refresher. I'm learning a lot through these videos. So... This was a super interesting one to watch. I know when I did this video about Norway, a lot of people commented that the video that I was reacting to was just not accurate. So hopefully this one was. You guys can tell me in the comments section below if there's a lot of wrong things in this video. Um, hopefully not, because I'm 
I learn, I'm learning these things. I don't want to learn these things if they're not right. So please correct these facts in the comments if you if there are any. And yeah, God, Denmark just sounds so cool. I mean, the Scandinavian countries are just so awesome. I think they have so much to offer and I, I really need to go to Denmark. It's the only Scandinavian country that I haven't been to yet, but I'm hoping to go to Copenhagen in the first few months of next year. Um, but I want to explore more of Denmark. Obviously, I know the capital cities of all of the Scandinavian countries are not really, they're not really, they're, they're not the, the best way, I guess you can say, to get a real glimpse into the life of the people in those countries, because living in the big cities, it's not like authentically Norwegian or Swedish or Danish. So I do want to explore Denmark, um, Copenhagen. But I want to see more of Denmark as well, just like I'm going to see more of Norway outside of Oslo and Sweden outside of Stockholm. So, yeah, I'm really excited to do a bit of traveling around Scandinavia next year. But in the meantime, I'm really enjoying watching these videos, learning so much. If you did like this reaction video, then please give it a thumbs up. Please comment if you like. And if you want to see more videos of me reacting to all things Scandinavia, then please hit that subscribe button. Hopefully you'll come back and watch another one of my videos in the future. And until next time, guys, stay safe and I'll see you soon.